Do you like the Canon RF 28 to 70 mm L series USM? Well, how about another F2 lens complementing it? Or are you still waiting patiently for the Canon RF 35 mm F1.2? Stick around after this short break for a short RF lens update. But first, please do me a favor. Follow me on Twitter, but most importantly, please subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost you anything, it really does help this channel grow, and it helps keep you up to date on the latest camera gear, news, and rumors. I know many of you are still waiting patiently for the Canon RF 35mm f1.2. Yes, we've been waiting a long time for this lens, and we keep getting rumors that it's coming, it's coming, it's coming! Maybe this fall it's possible, but where I think we're going to get the Canon 35mm f1.2 is with the R5 or the EOS R5 Mark II announcement. There is a chance we could get it announced alongside the EOS R1 as well, but based on what we're seeing right now, all rumors are pointing towards early 2024 or middle of 2024. I, I would say the first half of 2024. And now to the 28 to 70 millimeter. I was talking in the intro about a new lens that's coming out that's supposed to be complementing that. Canon Rumor says that we've been told Canon is planning a second RF mount F2 zoom lens to complement the remarkable RF 28 to 70 millimeter F2 L series USM, which has to be one of the best lenses ever made. Yeah, and, and it's true, the 28 to 70 really does show off the R system, or I should say the RF mount, and the level of detail that you're able to get. The optics in this lens are very good. They're second to none. However, you are going to pay a rather steep price for it. But when it comes to the sharpness from the center to the edges throughout the entire focal range, it is a truly stunning lens, excellent for portrait photographers, wedding and event photographers, and even videographers. I like this lens. It, it's one of those lenses that's captured my imagination, but at this point, as far as my bank account, I'm saving up for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the R1, and this lens is just going to have to wait a little bit longer. But yeah, according to Canon Rumors, we're supposed to be getting another lens complementing this, but Canon Rumors didn't give us any leaked specifications. They didn't even give us, well, any hint as to where it would fit in. Would it be something like a somewhere between 14 and 18 millimeters to 28 millimeters? So like a 16 to 28 millimeter, a 14 to 28 millimeter F2 L series USM? No, they didn't even mention anything to indicate that, but could it go on the other side, giving us the much rumored 70 to 135 F2? The 70 to 135 has been rumored for going back to as long as the 135 millimeter prime, which we got last year. So we finally starting to ship the 135 millimeter F2, but there was still rumors that we were supposed to be getting a zoom version of that. So from 70 to 135 millimeters, but the question is, does this make sense to you? Does it make sense to various types of photographers, from street photographers, event photographers, to be able to shoot wide or to be able to shoot narrow, to be able to take a shot of the subject without the subject knowing you're there? And that's where the power of a 70 to 135 comes in. But being able to shoot wide from around 14 or 16 millimeters up to 28 millimeters also makes sense. And yes, I know what you're thinking. There is already a 70 to 200 millimeter. And yes, there are other lenses on the other side of the focal range as well. But you see, we're looking at F2. And the difference between F2 and F2.8, besides the math involved, really does make a di difference when you're shooting in low light, especially if you're a videographer. But as I found from a recent poll of this channel, some 55% of you are photographers first. And while some of you do shoot, well, uh, video, your primary, your how you make your money, your bread and butter is photography. For me personally, I would really love to, well, there's two lenses I would like to see that complement the 28 to 70. One is the 70 to 135 millimeter F2. I think I would probably get more use out of that lens, but then to be able to see something like, well, it'd be nice to see a 10 to 14 millimeter and then have a 14 to 28 millimeter F2. And I think that would really kind of round things off. Even at the high end, we're still missing an awful lot of lenses from Canon, whether they be primes, zooms, telephotos, or super telephotos. And when it comes to the entry level, other than a few pancake primes, we don't really have a whole lot other than kit lenses and mid-level. Well, mid-level is, um, there aren't really that many lenses in the mid-level, and the 24-105 f4, that lens is slowly getting pushed out of the affordability in the mid-level. So I was really hoping that before the end of this year, Canon would make some sort of announcement alongside Sigma, Tamron, and others saying, look, you know what, we're going to go ahead and approve you to make lenses for the RF mount. 
Now, behind the scenes, Canon could say to these guys saying, look, you know what? You're going to stay away from these lens focal ranges. You're going to stay away from shooting wide open anything wider than f1.4. And they could certainly go ahead and do that. And they would be, you know, in the contract, they couldn't say anything about it. And the good news for us is, hey, we'd start to see new lenses are coming out. And I think it makes a lot of difference. Yeah, with a Canon EOS R5, there are an awful lot of lenses I can use. And I can adapt all EF lenses, both third party and Canon. But when it comes to entry-level cameras like the R50 or even the R100, or even if we move up a little bit and spend a little bit more with the R10, we're finding that there aren't nearly enough lenses there when we look at the competition. And even if you're getting the R7, which is a little bit more at around $1,500, there's lenses like the Sigma 150 to 600 millimeter or the 60 to 600 millimeter. I have an adapter here, the EF to RF adapter, and I've adapted the 50 millimeter F1.2. I've even adapted simple USM lenses like the 18 to 130, 35 millimeter USM. And um, it's worked flawlessly. And from what I've heard, all these lenses do work flawlessly. But as Canon is making far fewer EF lenses, I can understand everybody's frustration with Canon at not approving more third-party lenses. It would be one thing if Canon was producing enough lenses for everybody, different focal lengths, different primes, super telephotos and telephotos, but because they're not, not having those lenses, when we look at Sony and look at the E-mount and see all the variety, variety of Tamron and Sigma lenses, other third-party lenses with autofocus, it is a little bit frustrating and I'm in the ecosystem. I'm not gonna jump out anytime soon because the cost of switching is huge. But for anybody looking at a new camera like the R50, well, maybe instead of the R50, they look at the Z50 or the Sony ZV-E10. Or maybe instead of looking at the Canon EOS R5, people start looking at the Nikon Z8 or the Sony A7R5. In the past, I've defended Canon saying it's taking time for them to build out their inventory and to sign agreements with third parties. But here we are some five years going on six years later, and we're missing an awful lot of key focal ranges of all the lenses I've talked about. So Canon, please um, either fill the gaps and the voids of much anticipated lenses such as the RF 35 millimeter F1.2. And I know that's not a cheap one. There's a lot of lenses we would like to see then please consider setting up some sort of agreement with Sigma and Tamron because it, 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 it's hurting us. It's hurting us, the customer, because we can see certain focal ranges that we just can't get. I love what you did with the 800 millimeter and the 600 millimeter F11s. I think they're terrific lenses. And I like what you're doing with some of the L-series glass, but when it comes to the entry level to mid-level, something that Sigma does a very, very good job of addressing please give them permission. Let them come out with a whole bunch of lenses that are very popular on the EF mount. And I understand if you want to protect some certain, well, wide open lenses, but this is starting to affect sales. We can see this in the numbers. And for you sitting at home watching, if you want to see up to date on all the latest camera news and rumors, what new RF lenses are coming out, or the latest coming out from Sony, Panasonic, Nikon, Pentax, and OM1 or OM system, then go ahead and subscribe, but make sure you also choose all notifications. And for all those minor news and rumors out there that all those stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well then go ahead and follow me on Twitter because I tweet out stuff on a, any given day, any two to three tweets. And if I see incredible sales like the Canon EOS R5, since Black Friday has been on sale, it's still $500 off and Adorama and B&H are still giving away a free battery grip. It's on sale $500 off local currency here in Canada. So there's a huge amount of deals out, on there, out there right now, and I'm always tweeting stuff out. I haven't tweeted out any sales today because I haven't had a chance to check. It's my lunch break, and I'm gonna take a look just before I start editing this video. But if you're still watching at this point, all the way at the end of the video, thank you so much for watching. If you haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and do so. It doesn't cost you anything, and it really does help get this channel noticed. But that's it for today. Oh, actually, one more thing. I do have another video coming out. Oh, no, wait a minute. This is. See, this is Monday and you're probably watching this video on Wednesday. So I was gonna remind you about the video I have coming out tomorrow, but since this is Wednesday, never mind. Anyhow, so thank you so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.